Hello, and welcome to what Christians have called for centuries Holy Saturday. Today we take a look at and think about uh, what happened on Saturday, which isn't all that much. But the significance of it is, is quite large for you and me. Matthew 27, last verses of chapter 27 read, On the next day, this would be the day after Jesus had died, so this would be on Saturday, or what has become known as Holy Saturday, which was the day after Preparation Day, the chief priests and Pharisees gathered in the presence of Pilate and said, Sir, we remembered what that deceiver said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. So give a command that the tomb be made secure until the third day. Otherwise his disciples might steal his body and tell the people, He is risen from the dead. And the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard. Go make it as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and posting a guard. Joseph of Arimathea went to bury Jesus in his tomb, uh, uh, that, that unused tomb. On Good Friday evening, before the sunset, of course, you have the, the women who are watching where Jesus was buried. And, and on Saturday, as, as you know, there isn't a whole lot that happens. We read the part of Scripture that deals with Saturday. The Jewish leaders were so scared of, of the prophecies that Jesus was seen while he was alive that they asked Pilate to post a guard. Pilate granted that request and, and that happened. You know what it's, it's interesting to note is Caiaphas, the high priest, applied all of these prophecies to Jesus, realized that Jesus was the fulfillment of that prophecy, and yet refused to believe. Oh, how the devil works, right? The devil will work and work and work until he has someone on his side. Jesus being buried in that tomb on Saturday and, and, and there the whole day gives us pause, doesn't it? It's a somber thought because we are the ones that put him on the tree, the cross, and crucified him. That should be our tomb, not his. So it's somber, somber as we think about it. But yet, as has been said again and again and again throughout Christianity, the earth waits in silence just as Jesus was resting in the tomb. The earth is waiting in silence for Sunday morning to happen for Easter morning, for, for Jesus to burst forth from the tomb, showing that death could not hold him, that sin could not hold him, that he had won the victory once and for all. Why is that significance for us? Take a look at Romans 6, verse 4. We, you and me, were therefore buried with him by this baptism, into his death, so that just as he was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too would also walk in a new life. The idea there is simple. Our sins, our faults, our terrible things that we have done, were buried with him in the tomb. 
the doubts and the fears, what's going on in our world right now, what's going on with the COVID-19 virus, how it's affecting our lives, how it's affecting perhaps what we think, what we do, how perhaps it's even affecting our trust in our God, causing us to sin, causing us to doubt the promises that God has laid out for us. All of those sins were taken away at the cross. We're buried with Jesus in the tomb. And Jesus will show. He will show tomorrow that those sins can't hold him, that death cannot hold him. And that is what we look forward to as Christians. The high point of the year. Jesus rising from the dead. Today, today we wait. Today we reflect on what God has done for us. Today we realize it's our sins that are buried with him in that tomb. But Jesus is victorious. And Jesus is risen. I'm going to sing a cappella today. We sang this song a little while ago in in one of the past devotions. Don't remember exactly which one it was. But we look especially at verse 3. I'm going to sing verse 3. You can join with me if you would like. But it, it's a verse that is traditionally sung at the end of Good Friday services, but it's it's okay on um, a Holy Saturday devotion as well. If you look at the words of verse 3, what wonderful words. The idea that because of what Jesus has done for us, that gives us that confident hope because of his life, his death, his resurrection, of what that means for us when you and I face that death. Lord, let at last your angels come to Abram's bosom, bear me home, that I may die unfearing. And in its narrow chamber keep my body safe in peaceful sleep until your reappearing and then from death awaken me that my own eyes with joy may see O Son of God your glorious face my Savior and my fount of grace. Lord Jesus Christ, my prayer attend, my prayer attend, and I will praise you without end. A prayer for Holy Saturday. Dear Heavenly Father, we are silenced at the grave of your Son, who knew no sin, yet was made sin for us. You permitted him to die, exchanging his innocence for our guilt. In love he came to us, but he was rejected by hate. He taught us obedience, but men rebelled against him. We confess that a great Mystery confronts us at this tomb of sin and death. He was buried behind the great seal of our sin and our death. By faith we know also that he who died is the one who unlocked the great secret of your love. His tomb is my tomb. He carried with him to the grave our sins and our death, that he might break their hold on us. Trusting in the Lord's promise, that he would rise again on the third day. We come not to mourn him, but to confess the sin that he would leave buried. Have mercy on us, O God. Have mercy on us.
Amen. Certainly wish you God's blessings. Uh, Trinity members, please read the email uh, that was sent to you along with this video uh, detailing the Easter services tomorrow that you may join in. Uh, there will be a handful of them. Uh, first off, you'll be getting a special video uh, devotion slash service from me uh, in your inboxes nice and early tomorrow morning. Uh, second of all, if you wish to uh, watch a live stream Easter service, uh, please watch our sister church uh, right down the road, St. Paul's in South Haven. Uh, there'll be some special uh, surprises in that service uh, for you. The link is in your um, in your email today. Uh, just click on the live stream portion at the top of their website, uh, and that should be good to go. Uh, the service starts at 9 a.m. on Sunday, Easter Sunday morning. Also, a special worship opportunity uh, for our synod. Uh, that happens at 6 p.m. Central Time, 7 o'clock here. Uh, there'll be a live stream service from the seminary in Mequon, Wisconsin. Uh, a special Easter evening service. Uh, uh, the link to that live stream, which will begin at 7 o'clock here, uh, will be um, in, is in your email as well. Uh, wonderful opportunities. Because we can't gather together, because we can't join together, um, because perhaps we can't even gather together with family and friends. It's a wonderful opportunity to take the whole day and worship our risen and living Lord. God's blessings. We'll see you on the most joyful of days. We'll see you tomorrow. God's blessings.